Hey, I'm going to talk about using Cardo as a field calculator. Um, for those of you coming from a traditional GIS background, you're probably used to using a field calculator function in your GIS, which adds a new field to your attribute table and uh, sets that attribute table according to um, probably the values in some other fields in that table. And you can do similar things in Cardo. Uh, for the most part, though, you're going to be using SQL to do that. So I'm going to show you how to add a new column to your data set in Cardo, and then populate that column based on the values in uh, other columns. And for my test data, I'm using some New York City collision data. I can show a preview of it, although we're not really going to be doing anything with the map. Um, this is what it looks like. It's a bunch of points. Um, it has a lot of data on it, um, including the number of people injured and number of people killed, number of pedestrians injured, and so on. And one thing you might want to do with a data set like this is uh, create a column that summarizes some of this information. If you're using, um, if you're using some subsets of the data, or you're categorizing the data in some way that isn't natural based on the columns it has, you might want to add a new column. So, for example, uh, maybe I want to easily be able to categorize based on whether people were injured or killed or neither. Um, so. So maybe I'll add a new row to do that, or a column rather. And uh, Cardo just creates a blank column like this. Everything's set to null, and it has a kind of a random name. And I'll call it, um, let's say, damage description. And I'll rename it. Um, this is going to be text. It's just going to be like injuries, deaths, or neither, basically. So right now I'm leaving it as a string. If you were doing something where you're adding numbers here, you might want to change this column to a number column. And that's how you would do it. Okay. So now I, uh, could, if I really wanted to, I could go through row by row and I could say, okay, this is zero injuries, zero people killed here, um, and I could come in here and say, um, just car damage. And I could do that for every single row. Obviously, I don't want to do that if I can avoid it. Um, for a lot of reasons. First of all, it's going to take a lot of time, but also it's going to introduce per perhaps some inconsistencies if you uh, make some typos when you're inserting this column value um, and so on. So I'm going to edit and remove the value or try to, but it's not letting me. Okay, I'm just going to ignore that. Let's refresh it and see. Maybe, maybe, um, something was stuck. Nope. Okay. Um, I'm just going to leave it then. Uh, so when you want to set a value on a lot of features at once, you're going to want to use SQL to do that. And the way I'm going to do it in this case is I'm going to select all of the features with uh, non-zero value in this injury column and set the value in our new column based on that. And then I'm going to come back and select all of the features where someone died and set the value. Then I'm going to select all of the features where both of these are zero and set the value then. Um, so you might want to take a second to think about how your categories actually break down if you're doing something like this. Um, and I would always recommend testing your SQL 
your filtering before running this. So first things first, I'm going to say select all of the columns where uh, number of persons injured is greater than zero. And I'm going to apply that, just make sure that Yes, it seems to have worked because all of the values I'm seeing in this column are 1 or greater. So when you're setting the column value, setting the column value in damage description, I'm going to say instead of select star from, I'm going to say update. want to update and then the name of your data set. So I usually just leave it there from the select. I say set the name of your column, mine is damage description, equal to whatever value you want. This could be, um, I'm just going to say people were injured. Okay. So the where, I'm not going to touch. The where is what we just tested on the select, and it worked great. Um, so all I'm doing is saying update, data set name, set the name of my new column to the value that I want it to be. And I'm going to hit apply. And then I'm going to look over here at my damage description and see, yes, people were injured. And I'm going to double check that feature does have one person injured. I'm going to do the same thing for this, this feature. Uh, yep, three people were injured there. So that seems to have worked fine. I'm going to do the same thing for deaths. So I'm going to say select all of the rows, all of the features, where number of persons killed is greater than zero. And apply it. And there are only a few here. Um, I could do this manually, but for consistency, I'm going to say update my data set name set damage description equal to people died people were injured people were injured and then finally I'm going to um, for all of the other cases I'm going to set the value to just car damage. So, um, update set damage description equal to just car damage where, and I want to only do it where these columns are both zero. Okay, so number of persons injured is zero and the number of persons killed is equal to zero. Okay, so this should catch everything else. And I'll hit apply and look at the damage description. I see a lot of just car damage. Some people were injured. Um, and maybe just to be completely sure, I'll create a map out of this and go into my layer and style based on that new column that I created. There it is. Not sure how I missed it before. So you should see... It's hard to tell right now, but let's add a legend. Maybe let's make the style clash a little more so we can see the difference between them. All right, so so you can see that there's a spread of just car damage, people were injured, people died, and I don't see any others. That's one thing I would definitely want to be checking. If I set, if I thought I had caught all of the categories that I wanted to do, um, but there were still some points left, then I might want to check on that. But it looks like this was successful. Um, so I'm going to go back to my
do just that. And maybe I just want to hit back until I get there. <clears throat> okay, so um, we could do other things in here. For example, um, if you had a number of columns that you wanted to do some math on, you could absolutely do that. Um, so if, say, a uh, number of persons injured didn't exist, but we had all of these number of pedestrians injured, number of cyclists injured, number of motorists injured, if we had those three columns and we just wanted to add those up, could pretty easily do that with SQL. Uh, that's a pretty typical field calculator operation. Um, so I'm going to do that. Um, shouldn't take too long. Add a new column. We'll say, I'll just call it injuries, so I don't clash with the existing column. And I'll come down here and change the data type. Like I mentioned before, I want this to be a number. And in my SQL, I'm going to say update. Set injuries. <clears throat> and in this set, you can do math. So you can say where it's equal to number of pedestrians injured. Plus number of cyclists injured. Plus number of motorists injured. And you don't need a where here, because we actually want to do this for every single feature in my data set. So I'll hit apply. And I'll look over at injuries. And you'll see one, three. This three feels familiar. So I'll scroll over and look at number of persons injured. That matches. If I wanted to be completely on the safe side, I could say where, um, maybe select all of the features where they don't agree. Um, number of persons injured is not equal to injuries. Just see if my math was wrong. And it looks like no features. Um, so it looks like I did my math correctly. So that is a quick introduction to how you might use Cardo and SQL to replicate what you might do with a field calculator in a GIS. Hope that helps.